Justin Trudeau has done it again. Our virtue signaling prime minister couldn't resist the urge to stick his nose where it doesn't belong, igniting the fury of yet another foreign government. This time, the Sri Lankan government accused Trudeau of using inflammatory language to accuse them of a genocide they didn't commit. They mourned Trudeau of severing international ties, but not before lambasting his statements and debunking it with clear evidence. This unfortunately was not the first time Trudeau has proven to be a complete clown and a total embarrassment for every Canadian on the world stage. But this might be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Canada cannot afford strained relations and trade barriers with major powers because our drama teacher PM can't resist playing to the crowd. It is time for a leader that values Canadians and Canada as much as he values literally everything else. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. Before we jump into today's video, take a second to sign up for our exclusive uncensored newsletter. The mainstream media won't report Trudeau's scandals and corruption, but our newsletter delivers the raw truth to your inbox daily. We'll leave you the link in the description box. Now let's dive into today's crazy developments. And just like clockwork, Trudeau has gone ahead and embarrassed Canada on the global stage by angering another country on the prospects and ideals that he loves to endlessly virtue signal about. This time, the Sri Lankan government was the one that had to lambast Trudeau for his damning comments and actions against the foreign government, and thus accuse him of engaging in electoral vote bank politics. Now before we dive deep into the criticism and the dangers that might hit Canada as a result, we must first explain the meaning of vote bank politics, and why this accusation is so damning and in line with whatever Trudeau and the Liberals have been preaching for almost nine years now. Vote banks can be defined as a subset of people or a community of individuals sharing the same values and beliefs, and thus becoming absolutely loyal to a single political party and ideology. Vote bank politics, on the other hand, is trying to cultivate a vote bank through divisive policies. It is the encouragement of voters to vote for a singular party or candidate, even if it is against their better judgment and will ultimately end up with them losing more than they ever gain. Now, I might be alone in realizing this, even if I know the majority of Canadians will agree once they understand, but isn't this just basically describing the weird trance that Trudeau has the liberal voter base on? Trudeau preaches stability, prosperity, and fairness for every generation, but year after year things get considerably worse and the people suffer more and more. Yet Trudeau somehow always finds a way to court his loyal voter base back every time. Most Canadians are finally waking up to the reality of the dire state of Canada under Trudeau, but there is still somehow a voter base that supports this man and believes every lie that escaped his mouth. And now that we are accustomed to the meaning of vote bank politics and how Trudeau actually utilizes it through his leadership of Canada, it is time to discuss how Trudeau messed up in the eyes of a country like Sri Lanka. Trudeau was accused by the Sri Lankan government of using inflammatory language and making outrageous allegations that took aim right at the government, accusing them of committing a genocide against the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam during an armed conflict that ended all the way back in 2009. This is basically him appealing to a singular community and engaging with their politics and beliefs in spite of the true damage that he is causing them and other Canadians. In the statement that is at the center of this whole international debacle, Trudeau acknowledged a genocide that he thinks happened and advocated for justice and accountability by urging the Sri Lankan government to take the necessary steps towards respecting freedom of religion, belief, and pluralism of every citizen in the country. Trudeau then virtue signaled some more regarding the Liberal government imposing sanctions on officials believed to have taken part in what Trudeau claims is a genocide before announcing that Canada's parliament voted unanimously to recognize May 18th as Tamil Genocide Remembrance Day. A statement just like every other Trudeau speech, full of insane amounts of liberal preaching and casual lies spit in your face in the most sleazy way imaginable. And because statements like this rile the average everyday Canadian, it is no wonder that the Sri Lankan government was riled up as well. The Sri Lankan government blasted Trudeau and his lies right up to orbit as they dissected his false statement and refuted his unhinged allegations that are trying to paint the Sri Lankan government as a fascist dictatorship of some sort. They bring up the fact that no competent authority in the world has ever brought evidence to back up these egregious statements about a genocide taking place and the fact that the party that is being stated as the recipient of such abhorrent actions have been recognized as a terrorist group in over 33 countries, including Canada itself. So not only are they clearly clowning on Trudeau and his weak leadership leading to statements that don't hold enough ground on the global stage, but they are also rightfully calling him laughably incompetent to the point where he didn't realize that the group he is out there supporting without a second thought is actually a group that his country and government confirmed to have recognized as a terrorist entity. It is actually quite maddening that Trudeau talks all willy-nilly about subjects that definitely don't concern him or any of us Canadians for that matter. 
And then he risks international relations deteriorating further and confirming to the whole world that Canada under Trudeau is and will forever be a laughing stock not to be taken seriously whatsoever. This is not the first time Trudeau angered another country because he couldn't keep his mouth shut. India, for instance, kept warning Trudeau and his liberal government about their endless and unexplained courting of another separatist group by the name of Khalistan, because Trudeau couldn't help himself without encouraging extremist chants throughout his speeches. Waheguru Ji Ka Khalsa, Waheguru Ji Ki Fateh. Happy Vasaki, Joyeux Vasaki. I want to thank the Ontario Six and Gurdwara Council for organizing this extraordinary event once again today. It is always so amazing to be back at the Khalsa Day celebrations. I'm happy to be here with Ministers Kara, Ananda Sangari, and Valdez along with our great MPs, Sonia Shafkat, Ruby, Meninder, Judy, and Paul. And it's great to see so many different mayors, leaders, other parliamentarians. This is truly an occasion that gathers us uh, from across the city, from across the country, to celebrate alongside you. Marking the creation of the Khalsa, Vasaki brings together friends and family. And speaking of friends and family, I know that many of you have loved ones that you want to see more often. That's why our government has negotiated a new agreement with India to add more flights and more routes between our countries, and we will keep working with our counterparts to add even more flights, including to Amritsar. Vasaki, c'est l'occasion de reconnaître les valeurs qui sont au cœur du Sikhisme. Des valeurs comme la générosité, la communauté, l'honnêteté et le seva, le dévouement envers les autres. In April, we also celebrate Sikh Heritage Month. When our government first introduced Sikh Heritage Month five years ago, Canada became the first country in the world to recognize this month officially. It is a moment to celebrate the remarkable contributions of Sikh Canadians from the railroads to the world wars to science, art, business, and of course, politics. And as we come to an end of this year's Sikh Heritage Month, I want to remind everyone that the story of the Sikh community in Canada is in fact the story of Canada. This is what Canada is all about, working together to build a better future for everyone. Just a few weeks ago, we released our budget, 2024, which is a plan to build more homes faster, to hire more doctors and nurses, and to help with the costs of dental care and diabetes medications. We're also giving authorities more resources to crack down on auto theft. And we're helping sick Canadians tell your stories we're supporting a space in the Royal Ontario Museum dedicated to Sikh arts, culture, and heritage with an investment of $6 million. We'll be working closely with the Sikh Arts, with the Sikh Arts and Culture Foundation, and this space will be created by, with, and for the Sikh community. We're also giving funding to the Indus Media Foundation to complete their short film highlighting the shared military heritage of Canadian and Indian soldiers in the world wars. But we gather here today to remember that one of Canada's greatest strengths is its diversity. We are strong, not in spite of our differences, but because of our differences. But even as we look at these differences, we have to remember and get reminded on days such as this and every day that Sikh values are Canadian values. Truth, justice, openness, compassion, service, human rights. These are the values at the heart of Sikhism. These are the heart values at the heart of Sikh Canadian communities, but they're also values at the heart of all Canadians. To the nearly 800,000 Canadians of Sikh heritage across this country, 
We will always be there to protect your rights and your freedoms, and we will always defend your community against hatred and discrimination. Je tiens à dire aux 800 000 Canadiens d'origine Sikh, d'un bout à l'autre de ce pays, qu'on va toujours protéger vos droits et vos libertés. That's why we're enhancing the security infrastructure program, adding more security at community centers and places of worship, including in Gundwaras. Your right to practice your religion freely and without intimidation is exactly that, a fundamental right guaranteed in the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms that we will always stand up and defend you for. We will stand with you once again on this wonderful day of celebrations. Happy Vasaki. Merci beaucoup tout le monde. Waheguru ji ka kalsa. Waheguru ji ki fateh. Merci. If this incompetence by Trudeau keeps stepping over the reasonable line with every other country, then Canada risks severing important ties with countless other nations as they impose tariffs and cut economic plans. Maybe things will get out of hand in the future to the point where Trudeau would increase the national security risk of Canada as he butts heads with countries over issues he is not concerned with. India and Sri Lanka have already showcased how they are fed up with Trudeau's language and tactics, so we can't rule out a future escalation or yet another country land-based in Canada. If anything, this whole debacle further proves that Trudeau is absolutely not fit for the mantle of a leader in the free world. He is incompetent, rash, and most of all an embarrassing representation for every Canadian. Well, that's all for now. What do you think of Sri Lanka's warning to Trudeau? Do you believe Trudeau will heed the warning or continue on his dangerous path? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also follow us on Twitter, where we post stuff we can't post on YouTube. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I will see you in the next one.